Welcome to Just Men, a life-changing program that resonates hope as well as encouragement. The program that gives you inspiration and information. I'm your host, Jeff Tate, and thank you for joining Just Men. On today's program, we have the founder and director of Ephesus House, James Settle. James, welcome to Just Men. Glory. Man, it's a pleasure for you to be on our program, and I know we have a lot to talk about, I mean, with the Ephesus House and how it evolved and so forth. But before we get into that, let's tell me a little bit about who is James Settles. Well, James Settles uh, actually is a man that originally came from Memphis. Uh, I actually went to prison back in 86 and uh, with a bad drug problem, and really that's where I found the Lord at. Uh, came into a personal relationship with Jesus back in 1986 and uh, and one of the things that was real tough for me is um, uh, I had come to a point in my life uh, I remember just like yesterday uh, we were sitting in a hotel room I had the money I had the drugs and we had the women of course and I, so I went outside the hotel room and I was sitting on top of my car and I asked myself this question. I got money, I got the girl, I got the car I want, and I said, it's got to be something better than what I'm doing. But at that time, I went back into the hotel room and started getting high and having fun with the girls. And recently, it was, I say, it wasn't two months later, I was in prison, and that tape just kept constantly playing. And at that point, uh, I thought about what my mom used to say all the time, that, uh, James, if you uh, gave your life to the Lord, things would be better. And that was when uh, I made a decision and asked God. I said, if you're real, I'm asking you to come into my life and help me to not use drugs again. This was September 16, 1986, and uh, it's been over 22 years now, and uh, he's kept that promise, so I've been... Uh, just serving him faithfully as well. Wow, that's beautiful. And I think it's a good foundation. I mean, you started out the ground running uh, in terms of just your relationship and how you came into a relationship with God through those trials to triumphs, obviously, in terms of the Ephesus house and how it evolved. Right. Uh, but before we get into the Ephesus house, let's kind of talk a little bit, too, about uh, the state of mind that you were in, even in learning about God when you were in prison. I know a lot of men, they find God when they are incarcerated, and they uh, may call it that kind of that, what, that jailhouse religion where it doesn't stay long, right. but it's there. And then sometimes, you know, you have the Muslims who, I mean, that is a, they're really, their ground in some respects to be able to bring men into the nation of Islam. And so there's a lot of things that goes on in that confinement area. Talk about that experience and how you were able to find God in that level of confinement and then stay with him uh, until you got out and obviously leading up to the, being the founder and director of Ephesus House. Well I guess for me and everybody has takes different roads uh, on this journey but for me um, I actually kind of studied a little bit about the Quran and, and then I was reading the Word of God trying to disprove it to be honest with you uh, because most of my friends were sharing with me that the Quran was the black man's religion and Christianity was the white man's religion and so as I would read the Quran and dig into uh, the Bible what they call the white man's religion uh, the more and more I began to dig into it the more and more I began to see that even white folks wasn't following it. And uh, so, and that was basically uh, how I made my decision. I, uh, I studied, and uh, even when I think about when I was hooking and crooking in the world, uh, I tried to be the best at that. And so, as I began to uh, dig into the Word of God, and the scriptures say, you look into that perfect law of liberty, and if you don't go away being a forgetful, hear of that word that man would be blessed in his deeds and and as I began to dig into it I began to see a whole lot of stuff about myself that uh, that was unhealthy and that I didn't like and uh, for me it was an eye-opener yeah that's beautiful and I know that talk a little bit about the Ephesus house and how that came together as a result of 
all the things you've experienced and you getting yourself together before you can develop something for others to be a conduit to bring about change. And I think that's the word that keeps coming in my heart and my spirit, not only reconciliation and redemption, but also the, this level of change and what it had to take place in order for you to come into that level of enlightenment uh, about Ephesus House. Well, I have to say that um, when I got out of prison, I actually went into what was quote unquote called a halfway house. You know, you get out of prison and you have to stay there for 90 days until you can move on. And um, I actually served uh, right at eight years in prison. So I got out and I went into the, what is called a halfway house. And after 90 days, I ended up running the place. I was the manager of it. I stayed there actually about two years. And in that place, uh, I called myself just staying there to save some money, to get my own place. And in the midst of it, I ended up starting a business. And I met my wife, uh, whom is uh, Renee. And uh, so what I ended up doing is I saved my money put a down payment on my first home and we dedicated it to the Lord that evening and got married in it that night. And I say all this to say that I even share it with a lot of our young men today that it's so important to have a vision because, you know, all in the same token, I could have tried to shack up with uh, my fiance at that time, but God was really doing a work in my life uh, from a standpoint of being responsible. Uh, he said a man is worse than an infidel if he's not responsible for his children. And, uh, and one of the things that I had to deal with is I had a son that was out of wedlock in Memphis. And, and my goal, even before I got married, was to get a, facil get a home and be responsible for that young man. And just so happened, uh, I met my wife and, you know, and I used to share with her about my vision and the goals that God had uh, uh, given me. And um, and so we ended up, she brought a boy into this marriage. And, uh, and one of the things that I used to share with her all the time when we were dating, because they were both little bitty guys, you know, is how do you feel about me uh, raising your son? Because, you know, I think it's so important uh, when a man do uh, hook up with a queen that whatever she brings to the table, you know, you're one. And uh, and that's tough, you know, dealing even with a blended family, you know, that's not an easy deal, which uh, I'm just so thankful that in meeting my wife, she was the kind of queen that allowed me to be the head of the household. And uh, uh, to make a long story short, we put those two families, to, we merged those two families together, and and now we've uh, both of them boys have graduated from college, and wow. and they doing their own thing now. And uh, uh, but getting back to how Ephesus House was really started, I had my own business actually. Uh, I owned a detail shop, which I actually had about five. I employed about five guys, and. They made every bit of five, six hundred dollars a week. So you can imagine how God was giving the increase to my life and also my family life. And when Ephesus House actually came into play, I did not want any parts of it. Uh, but what God did is he reminded me of how he helped me to process pain back there mm. and that uh, he reserves the right to do whatever he chooses to do with my life, and that's what uh, my job uh, is to be. So I actually believe that I'm operating out of my purpose today. Mm. Wow, that's beautiful. It's interesting that you started out, in talking about Epson's house, you started talking about Settle's house. Yeah. Uh, in terms of, one, getting your relationship together in your immediate family, your immediate home, before you begin to develop a home for others to help make that transition. And I, I know that many men are having a difficult time internally or with their own family and their own spouses, but they can go outside of that and be able to be the light of the world. They can tell everybody else how to live and what